I will implement one feature in code. Here it is. This is that editor, that white screen with text, which you saw. It has a lot of state, quite a lot of state. And it is acting on uh, button clicks, calling into, let me find one thing. Okay, if you press uh, arrow down, it will move the cursor down or limited by the length of the number of lines displayed. And it will play, it will start playing the, what, the selection. And it will also redraw the, the interface because it might scroll. Now, what does it mean to uh, play current streak? It will look for the streak under the cursor and play that one. What does it mean to play current streak if it is in clue? Oh, now this becomes complicated. You see, there's a lot of logic in this. This class is some 360 lines of code long, and it is mixing the, ed the sound editing logic and UI logic. And what I want to have is a sound editor class as a separate thing, which doesn't depend on UI. I want it independent on whether this is a console application, whether it is a desktop application, whether it is a web application, whether it is a web service, I don't want it to depend on that. I want to have a unified process of editing a file, of editing a, sound, a speech file. This tool is obviously implementing one way of editing sound, and that is the way I was implementing manually. And I found it very useful because, I don't know, it produced the final sound in reasonable time. So I have implemented that, that is the opinionated tool. And I want it that way. So I want to pull out an opinionated sound editor class. And that's what I will implement uh, in live coding here. For the first time, that feature is missing. All right, this class here is everything you could see on the UI, except that I have pulled out this uh, button control, which is receiving a list of buttons to which it is sensitive, like W, uh, this is complicated, come on, let's take something, uh, delete, okay. Delete will remove current speaking streak from the from the result but it will not delete it from screen delete with shift will hard delete it it will it will completely remove it from the screen it is very important to understand the distinction and i will try to demonstrate you why that is so now i will i will start using this application you you will see what it means to use it effectively I have used this application in uh, laboratory um, uh, conditions, so not really, not, not real production. Uh, and I have been able to complete producing an entire audio file in time, which is only one half of the length of that file. So I didn't even have to listen to it and I could produce it. That, that is not a fast pencil concept. And I'm doing that in a very simple way. Listen Hello and welcome back to the course on design patterns in C Sharp. A very long sentence. I have created this control space. Hello and welcome patterns in C Sharp. Control space command, which indicates to the u uh, user interface, to the uh, not to the user interface, to, to the player, to only play the first and the last sen uh, second of this. Hello and welcome patterns in C sharp. Okay, so that makes My it name very is fast in this for me. And I will, uh, I will, I will find one. Um, it, you, but my plan for this is the example. This uh, this is the use case which is very difficult when editing sound. While I was developing this long and complicated uh, application, 
I have hit many, many nasty use cases. And that, that is what always happens when you develop code. And that's why I was developing simple uh, command line commands because I could just delete everything when I figured that, that uh, it is the wrong way to do something. And now l- listen to this. I have started a sentence and then there comes a comma and then there comes the rest of the sentence. Observe this. My plan for flexibility. But that is not the entire sentence. It continues. And then to run to the rescue. And I have these three attempts to and say then this thing. To, to the rescue. rescue. Three failed attempts. And that is where My pl- shift delete comes into play because I can, and I then can terminally to, to the rescue. Them. And then I can use the W command to glue this up. My plan for flexibility. And then to run to the rescue. Did you hear it? It is a complete sentence. Let me switch off this. My plan for this pattern and all the others in this course is to demonstrate code which is lacking one special kind of flexibility. And then to let a pattern come to the rescue. Did you hear that? Did you notice that the sound was cut and pasted? No. And that is the reason why I'm developing this application. I must be able to just say which parts go where, to declaratively mark them and let the application cut and paste them, putting exactly the right amount of time in between. Do you notice these dots here? Those are the pauses that happen before the sentence. If this sentence was, was an important statement, I would add one dot more. If it should sound as if it was a comma after the last sentence, I would return it to short pause. So I can declare the pauses in the output audio. When I press enter, it will generate all the pauses as I indicated. All right. So that is what this application is doing. But then, look at this. This is 360 lines of code. Gruesome code, which is mixing domain logic and UI logic. That, you know that that shouldn't be done. But why did I do that? Again, because I didn't know what I want. I didn't know what is the UI logic. I knew what is the UI logic, but I didn't know which part of what seemed to be a domain logic will survive. There are probably a thousand lines of code which I have deleted from this file while developing it without ever promoting them anywhere as a uh, as, as some useful class in its own right. Okay, so now is the time to put an end to that. I want to separate real logic, the the editing logic from the logic of the UI from just displaying that in this particular UI. I might want to use the same editor editor class in a desktop application, in a web application. These days we, we have Blazor uh, and the web assemblies. I'm also thinking about them as a possibility in, in near future to implement this application as a, as a fast web uh, uh, application in the client. So many options remain open and I want to pull out that opinionated sound editor into a separate class so that I can implement any of those opinionated real UI editors and offer them to people. And then I hit the wall. I was waiting for too long. There are I don't know, 20, 30 of these uh, commands I'm supporting. You know, it's it's too much work. 21 command I, I have counted. And they are very different. Some of them, like moving the cursor up and down, are basically changing the way the UI looks. They are changing the selection, maybe scrolling up or down the, the content of a screen, but that, that's that's pure UI. But they also do one additional thing. Okay, let, look at the move up command. It is moving the cursor. It is refreshing the view that is pure UI, but it is then 
running the player. And that is the logic. So I have them mixed. On the other hand, you will uh, notice, you will notice uh, that uh, while I was mixing UI and domain logic in one class, I was still playing smart. All concepts have their own methods. While you are experimenting with code, don't mix substantially different things in the same method. Make it a free lines of code. I could, no, I cannot uh, play before uh, putting cursor. I wanted to start the player running because it always takes a few milliseconds to, to warm up, to start really uh, pushing sound to the, to the speakers. And then I want to refresh the view while the player is uh, on my system is thinking. So it makes sense to do these three things in this order. It gives me the best uh, performance, the, the best uh, look and feel. But again, those are three separate steps. And this one, which is the domain logic, is a separate method. And so I want to have an editor which would be used by this component and which would do what to tell me. You know, the editor would say, the content of this streak, those lines I call streaks, those are speaking streaks in terms of this business, which I am just inventing. Uh, the content of this streak has changed because I have merged it with the two. The con that streak has disappeared or things like that. Since I am writing a uh, console application, I will make those changing changes events. I almost never create events, never use events, and that is mostly because I almost never create UIs. I see events useful in the UI, not in the domain layer. In the domain layer, I specifically use callbacks because callbacks are, uh, how to say it, an object-oriented or functional modeling style model of a process. So I'm, I'm very on the line of functional and object-oriented design. Events are a trick. Event is nothing else but a callback. It's only masked under the hood. And it makes sense to use them in uh, desktop applications. I will draw you a little diagram of what I want to have. Right now, I have the UI package, which is thin, it is not big. And I have that audio processing package, which is quite large. One of the things there is the audio player. It is an, an essential class in my design. It is wrapping around whatever player is under on the system. And it is exposing the API, which I need, like cutting subsequences of sound without having to decode the sound again in memory. So it, it is giving me projections, uh, which are time limited. And I, and it also allows me to add filters like fade in, fade out filters and stuff like that. I, I will add them progressively in, in the future. So this is very powerful class I made for playing sound much more powerful than, than uh, typical uh, library classes. And uh, I have this uh, editor, okay. I will call it UI editor because it, that is residing in the UI. It is currently using this player here. There's also that, uh, I'll call it button control here. The, uh, the UI editor is creating the button control but button control is making callbacks here to give it commands. It was only the way for me to remove part of the logic into a different class because it was really clogging this class here. What I want to have now is to introduce an editor here, a sound editor here, and to effectively use that 
sound editor is free to use the player. It will control the player. It will not be the UI element who controls the player because the sound editor will be that opinionated editor which knows that it should stop when the cursor moves, it should restart when the cursor comes to a new streak. Uh, all those actions are fixed right now. They could be parameterized, configured later, not now. All those uh, behavior patterns of my editor came in a very simple way. I was observing what I am doing and I was introducing new and new and new features to save my time when editing sound. And that is the only point, nothing else. I was just saving my time. And so I had my opinion how, I'm, uh, how I will save my time and I will investigate the market to figure out whether there are more people clo uh, similar to me who will uh, see that uh, saving effect in their own work. And that is the whole story. But now, button control will not control the UI editor, but instead it will control the sound editor. And sound editor will rise the events. I'm not sure how to draw them. What will I put? Let's call it that way. I, I'm not sure. Why it cannot be the arrow? It cannot reference the UI editor because it is in a different assembly. So now you see a better organization of code where UI editor and the keyboard control and this is this will not be uh, this will be the display this this will be a stupid non-intelligent display it will not know much display and the buttons those are the two, two things you have buttons will directly send commands calls direct calls move down move up uh, exclude include hard delete glue to the upper glue to the lower those commands will be sent directly to the sound editor and sound editor will fire the events saying this has changed in my content and display will just redraw and nothing else this this is the console application okay i want this console application to diminish i want it to have like 30 lines of code, 20 lines of code in this entire command. These 360 lines of code must go out. And that is the what I want. And now I now this will be maybe hard for you to, to follow because you haven't seen this code before. Streak edit state is one line on the interface. It can be included or in excluded. It has confidence, which determines the color in which it will uh, be displayed. This shows how many streaks per screen I want to, uh, to display. That is purely command line stuff. This doesn't even exist in desktop applications where you can have an infinite list. Now, foreground, background, colors, those, these things are UI. This thing is essential. This thing belongs to the, uh, to the editor. Uh, output file probably to the editor. The editor will get a command. Now you uh, generate that file. This is the audio player. This purge editor is disposable because player is disposable. And I want that to be moved to the editor as well. So the editor will become disposable and it will be controlled by this, uh, by, by this uh, UI editor. Uh, this is that control space command. Uh, it is toggling this Boolean flag. Uh, you will find the Boolean flags everywhere around in the UI. As, as much as I am trying to avoid Booleans in the domain logic, I'm not afraid of them in the, in the UI because they are simply switching true or false some, some features in the UI. That's not the problem. I, I don't know. These are also some parameters of the editor okay okay this is that padding that number of dots the maximum number of dots it means one dot is short pause medium pause three dots is long pause and default is is one uh, uh, zero based which means two dots <laughs> you'll never figure that out okay so i am how does this command, this is the, the this purge editor is, uh, uh, is used from the purge command. This is the command 
command line command, uh, which is simply starting the editor. How does it run? Well, it has a constructor which is initializing everything, and then there is the run. And it is doing one thing, initialize, what is initialize? Ah, oh, okay, cleaning the, in oh, okay, cleaning the console, all right, all right, I know, I remember. Okay, it is initializing the console, then it is redrawing the entire view, and then it is letting the button control run, that is this guy here, it will start the loop, call the commands, right now it is calling commands back into here, and it will terminate, this function is a blocking call, it will terminate when I press uh, enter to produce output, uh, after which I will clean up the console view and uh, save, here, save what was, what was selected. That, and this is the process. Remember that, that uh, pipeline, this is one pipe. Only this one will be interactive. And so what I want to do is to actually introduce the editor here. I sound editor. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know what it's going to do. Right now, it's only going to be an interface. It will be an interface because I don't want to... Uh, it will contain state, all right? And I don't want to see that state outside. I want a clean abstraction. So from this point on in the demonstration, I will simply write code. And you will see the way I write code every day. This guy here will depend on the editor. Even though I have implemented, I have given a name to the abstraction, I will still have to instantiate a concrete editor here. And then I think, do you see these streaks? This is the array of streaks that will be displayed. I want that to go into the editor. I want that, I want state, which is the editor's state, to be there. And I will show you one trick, which I use very often when introducing, uh, when introducing abstractions and moving state, a splitting state between two classes. I will create a derived type. I will call it sound editor, but uh, demo, I, I still don't have a name for it. What should be the name of this class? It should identify what is specific to that implementation. And I still don't know what it is. So I don't care. I will move, I will copy this and make it public. So I'm moving, I'm pulling out the state and soon I will start pulling out the domain logic. But first, first the state, why? Because I can apply that trick which I mentioned. I can initialize the editor the same way I'm initializing this editor, this UI editor. I can accept a sequence of this these streak confidence I, I numerable of i streak confidence streaks and it also requires you see i have this this uh, static function on streak edit state which is creating a sequence of them here i have uh, hard coded that uh, confidence threshold everything that is 80% or more sure that it was repeated later will be auto excluded before the editor opens. Everything else will be included. So I have that, that uh, static function which is creating a, a sequence of uh, edit state objects for me. You, uh, yes, yes, uh, this is what I wanted to show you. It is creating streak edit states and those, every state has those dots indicated and that is the padding category integer i will receive where is the constructor here initial padding category okay and i will do this this streaks equals i will do that same thing i will copy and paste it and then fix this 
Okay. This way, I have initialized state of the editor, the final editor. And now I'll do this thing. Delete this. And this editor is new streaks this default padding category. I will construct the editor. And then I haven't initialized the streaks. I will make it Oh, oh, now I have a problem. This is what I want. And since I am moving state to one concrete editor, I will reference a concrete class for now. Streaks. Okay, now it's all right. I will remove the setter here, uh, or make it private, make it private, okay. And now, look what I'm doing. I have just redirected all calls from the UI to the, to the content of the stream, screen to the editor, to the new editor class. In due time, I plan to remove this property getter entirely and to turn this state private and to get back to the interface, which will expose behavior, not state. After that, a concrete editor will manipulate internal state in, a, in its own way to produce the expected behavior proposed by the interface. And that is the entire story. What I did now was to cut out one piece of functionality which used to work, now it doesn't. One mistake is, okay, remove. Ah, okay, that is the hard remove, not, not the best name. Hard remove is effectively deleting one item from the array so that it never exists again. And the second replace, it happens with those split and split, split up and split down. When I glue two speaking streaks into one sentence, I might change my mind so there is the split command, which is uh, splitting it back. But you can tell whether the first segment is going up to appear as a new streak or the last segment is going down to repeat it, to, to appear as the new one. So I have two commands that don't work right now. I'm unable to check in this code or I could make this writable public set and make that settable of above uh, that property and be done with this feature. Let me try to fix these and make them work. What you are witnessing now is the coding technique in which I'm trying to implement one feature while breaking as little as possible around so that I can stitch them back, these, these red things, so that I can stitch them back so, so that they work again in such a way that all features of the software keep working the same way when looked from the outside, the same way as they, as they ever did. Once I succeed, I will have an intermediate state which is not the final product as I see it, as I want it, not the final uh, code as I want it, but I will have all the features implemented uh, to work the same way as they did, so I can commit my change and be done with it. I'll do it now. So the first error is to remove a streak. It means that the player will have to stop that the editor will have to remove one streak from, from the streaks and that I will have to move 
the cursor because I may have just deleted the last one. So the cursor will automatically jump to the next to last. And this is invoked from a larger process where I'm removing streak, then restarting the audio player and refreshing the entire screen. I only want to put this remove here as a behavior. Void remove current streak. Current. Mm, now I have a problem. Because, look, I will implement that. I will copy and paste this. And this index, look what it is. Index. It says remove streak at this position. I don't want to move that here. Now I'm talking about designing an abstraction. I don't want to pour more parameters in because this editor is opinionated. It knows its own stuff. It will know which is the current streak. This means that I am inventing an abstraction which is working on, on a cursor-based interface. You know, you, always, you can always uh, choose whether uh, the interface is showing a bunch of data and you are free to click them here, there, there, move them, I don't know, switch, whatever, or to be cursor-based. This editor will be cursor-based until I say it differently, until I figure out the, uh, some better way to implement it in a different way. Right now, I'm only thinking about the cursor. So, cursor. You see, this cursor. It exists here as a private field. I will put it here. And again, I will make it public. I will make it setter private. I will redirect this cursor to that cursor. Again, planning to delete it one uh, at one time in the future. It will not be initialized here. Look, I had just made 10 errors. This is terrible. Why number of errors is growing? because I'm too late with this design change. I should have done it when this class had 100 lines of code, not, not three or 400. Now I will have to, to pay a larger price and I'm trying to cope with these changes very, I want to, to make them very uh, in small steps so that I don't disturb anything. I, I am making changes so long as I can keep all of them in my head. If I feel, if I start feeling lost, I will introduce bugs. As long as I remember everything I am doing in this change, I will keep going. For example, if I start, you see, this jumped from two to nine errors. When will I feel lost? This is already a problem to me. Jumped from two to nine compile time errors. I don't like it. Maybe... Maybe delegating this to the editor was too much. Let's make it this way. Let's make this publicly settable. I will cut the corner. This is, this is so wrong. But I will cut the corner and make the compiler satisfied. I want to keep the red color under control. I don't want to have nine errors compile time errors to think about at the same time. Where is that editor? Okay, set uh, this editor cursor is value. Okay, back to free errors. All right, I might take a notepad and write on the side that this is a bad decision. This should be made uh, a to-do list that uh, cursor should be uh, privately settable only. But anyway, let's continue. Remove streak. Oh, it I didn't complete it here. Now that I have the cursor, I know that removing current streak means to remove 
the streak which is pointed to by the cursor. And that's it. I have my first domain logic operation built into the abstract editor. And I will use it. Here, this is not a good idea. This editor remove current streak. All right. Now, another item for the to-do list. Why am I stopping the player? That doesn't make sense. I said the player should be controlled by the editor because editor knows that the current streak has just been deleted. It should stop playing whatever it was playing because it was playing something that doesn't exist anymore. And uh, it, it should then think about what happens after removal. Did it get to, did it select the new streak which should uh, which should be played again? See, if that is included, the playing should start again. A lot of business logic, but I'm not going to add it right now. Also, this logic here, it's good to move it there. Why? Because I have already moved, basically moved, not really because it's settable, the cursor calculation. I will evaluate the cursor in the editor not there. So two lines of code, one formula and another formula, two formulas have just been moved out from the UI to this uh, to this class. I'm keeping this class, uh, this demo, where is it? I should move it. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, move. Okay, so th uh, this class will now appear here. Uh, this class is still part of the UI project because it's not implemented, it is not uh, independent, it is tied in all ways possible to the UI still. Now, one, uh, as I progress developing it, its ties with the UI will be broken one after another. In one moment, the entire concrete type will be separate from the purge editor, from the UI editor. It is now dependent on this concrete class. One day it will really use the interface only. At that time, both the interface and the concrete class will be moved, for example, to audio processing uh, library assembly. Right now, I only have one error, and that is replace current streak with, okay, uh, it is, it is invoked from these two places, splitting and splitting, separating the first and separating the last, producing one or two elements. This function might not produce anything special in cases that that it was in the command was invoked on a streak which was not joined from multiple streaks in the first place, so there's nothing to split. So it might produce only one streak, and that is the one on which it is invoked. But if there are more of them, it will... Uh, why don't I show you that code? Oh, I don't know what this is doing. Ah, complicated. Forget it. So you can get the point. Uh, it will either pull out the first or the last streak from a bundle and turn them, the rest of the bundle as one, and the new one as the new one and produce two streaks or keep one. And that's why I have one uh, function which is receiving whatever streaks there are, and it is replacing the current one with these, possibly expanding the list of streaks. So I will move both of these functions to the interface first, okay? and then go to the concrete editor, make the empty implementation, and then go to, go to these and effectively implement them. I will just copy and paste them and see what's wrong with, with that. Compiler will surely tell me if something is missing. I'll make them, oh, play, oh, no. 
the player again the player i cannot just refresh view will not be part of this operation definitely not and play will not be part of this operation this remains private i have changed the wrong one this is public and i will retain both functions here only this one will be moved and when replacing i will say this editor split current streak down this editor split up <clears throat> okay it's green and i was pretty safe all the time i think i was safe i think i didn't introduce any bug did anyone notice any bugs during this development it is built let's try it 12 seconds is a long time okay listen hello and welcome my name is Ar in this module it is the de this works move up down works remove that is the hard remove and then shift delete it works and then to la my Join. plan for this pattern and all the other my Control plan space. for flexibility and then to come to the rescue okay I can reverse this here is a W and S to join and shift W shift S is to split. I will split down that is shift S. My plan for flexibility. It works. So I have made no changes to the externally visible behavior of this application. <clears throat> what is next? The next is to commit it. I don't want to pile up the changes beyond the smallest possible step that works. Sound editor introduced abstract sound editor. Applied the abstraction to commands and I will not spend more time to uh, to write all this. I would name in the description what commands i have semi moved i would explain possibly that the move is not complete things are missing that cursor should be not writable that player is missing in the editor things like that commit and now i'm clean i can even go home come tomorrow back everything will uh, will work if this class was covered with tests i would uh, verify that the tests are passing that i didn't introduce uh, any uh, any failures that didn't exist and uh, any bugs and that is it so oh uh, cache yes cursor plus equals one uh, should be removed removed where so you think that i made a bug wait removed from here yes you're right you're right i made a bug split current streak up it should be removed from here you're right thank you thank you if i ever had tests they would discover this and i would explain which one okay so again i am back to normal and now i think which part do i dislike i dislike controlling the the playback from the ui because it is hurting me right now i want all the logic be moved there so that i can only stay with the uh, with the ui logic i want this these two lines of code i want in the ui editor and playback must be there you see this play is everywhere i will introduce but i want to move that player can i just move it? i cannot m just move it because purge editor is disposable and it is disposing the player from inside of its dispose i will copy the reference of the player into the the editor and not dispose it there so the editor will not be the owner of this player right now in the future it will be audio player player this player is player good let's see what it makes what difference it makes there it will complain 
that I don't have the player. So let's exchange these two lines and pass this player there. So right now I can start playing sound from the, the editor. What does it mean to play sound in the editor? It is in this application very specific. It means that, let, let me see what, uh, what this one is doing. Play current streak, I saw that somewhere. Play, play current streak, yes. If it is included, okay, starts the set. Um, hmm. This logic means that if uh, the streak is not included, it will not start playing automatically. I will have to uh, start it manually uh, because I don't want to hear the sound that will be excluded. I don't care about it. Anyway, set playback, start playback, set playback. What is this? Select, uh, uh, this is it. Player, my player has the select function, which means, which will receive the intervals object. The intervals is a sequence of interval objects and interval is a time interval, begin end or begin and duration. It will receive a sequence of intervals and it will play the subset, the subsequence of, of the total file. And that's what my player is doing. That, that is its most uh, important feature. I want this logic to be moved to the editor so that when, for example, I move down, I want the player to start playing. I might choose to implement that feature on this command, but that is complicated. Maybe it's better to take, let me show you the commands. These are all the commands. There is one very simple command regarding the player, toggle pause. It will start or stop playing. I might implement that feature and you see right now I don't even have a function in this editor for that. I will go to the abstract editor and say toggle pause. And this behavior will simply be delegated to the to the, the to the player which is already located in this object. I have a command on the player to toggle pause. I will change this command to toggle pause on the editor. And I'm done. Will it work? We'll see. But I have just moved the most primitive command regarding the playback to the editor. More complicated things will come. Keshav. You usually recommend classes to be immutable, but I see here you use both get and set. Any reason? Or do you want to change it in the future? I will not change it. This situation is very specific because it is holding a disposable object inside of it. This player is holding audio streaming information which is consumed by the system audio player. You cannot just dispose it. It will stop playing. Uh, if you hold a disposable object inside your object and you want your outer object to become immutable, you would have to pass control to the next object in line it produces. It would have to pass this disposable player to the new object. But then, what happens when that first object is collected? Garbage collected. Will it be disposed? Will the player inside of it be disposed? Yes or no? If no, why no? What if no other object was created out of it? Does it know about that? That's the problem you have with uh, disposable objects and immutability. The immutable object doesn't know whether it has transferred control of the disposable component to somebody else, or it is still responsible for it, responsible to disposing it. It is a very complicated matter, and uh, I'm not dealing with it in any special way. I'm just admitting that this sound editor object is <clears throat> collecting changes during its lifetime and 
producing some result, whatever it is, it is it will be the, the MP3 file, the resulting file, but it doesn't matter. It produces some product and then it gets disposed so that it can destroy the player. So I don't mix disposable components and immutability. On the other hand, I must limit the effect of having this class. It must not be spread around. It must not uh, hold too many responsibilities. You, you must keep it small, as small as possible. Okay, so I'll speed up a bit because I want to get to one very special, special uh, position where I will demonstrate the last interesting thing for today. And after that, uh, I will let you go. So I would play, I would commit this. Yes, save everything. And, uh, and now I have a very primitive operation built into this. This here is built into the editor. Now I want a more complicated thing to be implemented there as well. Move up, down is a complicated thing. It is moving the cursor, but also changing what the player is playing. So I will take that sound editor. I will change the name cursor down and move cursor up. Okay. I want to implement, I am implementing two functions, not just one because they are basically the same. Uh, and so let's see what goes in here. I will pull out a lot of code here. This editor here will move cursor up and move cursor down, which means that these two operations are becoming the responsibility of this class. Again, I am just breaking the build. Nothing special, I'm just breaking the build. I have two errors in one file. Watch if you can see the bottom of the screen. Just watch that. I want this to remain as close to zero as possible. So play current streak. This class will not be responsible to play current streak. I have already seen that it is using all these functions. So I'll just cut them. How many errors do I have? 13. Oh, not funny. All right, I'll deal with them. I might just uh, make this method public. I might do that. I have an idea. All right. Oh, play begin and only. That is that toggle. Another, another, another field that will have to be moved because it is affecting the way I play current streak. Whether it will cut the first and the last second or play the, the entire streak. So more things I discovered. 12 compile time errors. Too much. All right. Play current streak will become public. Uh, and will exist here as a private, which just delegates there. How many errors? How many errors? Where are the errors? Two. I'm good. I'm back in the game. Again, one thing to add to the to-do list. This is dirty. This must be deleted in due time. This must not remain there for another month. No, it must be deleted tomorrow. Also, I might be working on a ticket. All this I'm doing, this entire redesign, pulling out the editor from the UI project, would be one single ticket. It will consist of 10 or 20 or 50 commits on my end. I will not close the ticket as long as I have these nodes remaining. This is not done, you know? And once this class falls down to 10 lines of code or 20 lines of code, I will see that it is, is done and I will close the ticket and everything will be done. Play begin and only is another piece of state here. Mm -hmm. Again, I will cut the corner and make it a publicly settable property. 
and I will delegate here done another to do item only one compile time error remains what is this set playback why not play current streak I don't know now I don't know what my application is doing okay uh, Kesha so many members in a class should we think this class is doing more than a single responsibility? Yes and no. Uh, first, which class? Uh, the new editor or the old one? The new editor is having many, many uh, operations, but it is the editor. It is a component which is aggregating many business processes into one class. Will you ever call them? Will you ever do this this editor dot and read the list no and that is the other part of the story so sometimes in design you have classes which are aggregating many other features and then you will probably not call them directly but incorporate them in a larger composition which is using them let me show you where that is happening in this class. I will simply declare that this combination of buttons calls that function on the editor. This is the configuration, which is hard coded because the interface is hard coded. But uh, I will never, beyond these setups here, I will never write this dot editor dot anything. All those calls will only appear here. And for that reason, I don't see uh, this editor class as a problem in this example here. I hope I have answered your question. So generally, you would avoid having many methods, but this is the controller, the audio controller. It has many buttons on it and so many, so many uh, methods. Okay. Uh, anyway, I don't know why I did this. Where did I do that? That was the error. I don't know why I did this. I will have to investigate. But since I don't want to do two things simultaneously, I will make this function public on the editor and just point to that function. It will work the same because it is a copy and paste, uh, actually cut and paste. That function doesn't exist here anymore. I have, uh, I have moved it there. So my code should work exactly the same as before. And it is green. I will not spend the time uh, to, to demonstrate how it works. Uh, I will just commit it, but in real life I would... I would uh, try these things that I have moved. Now I don't want to, to spend more time doing that. Uh, okay, sound editor, what did I do? I was uh, uh, moved playback current streak playback to editor. Not exactly true, but okay. I have four commits. And the application is still doing the same thing as before. Uh, not this one. Uh, the same thing as before. Some code is missing here. See some 20 something lines of code are missing. And I want more. I want, I want, I, I haven't moved a single complete feature. Or I did move one. Okay. I did move one. That was this I have moved one complete feature to the editor yes this is the only uh, feature right now that doesn't exist uh, in the in this UI editor at all so the time is right for me to implement this connection here button control should receive the reference to the sound editor let me show you what button control is doing right now, what this when function is doing. It is receiving an action which to invoke 
when combination of keys is pressed. This class is immutable, for example, because it is a typical example of an, of, of an immutable type. I'm adding a command and then in the, in the run command, I am repeating forever read key from the, uh, from the, the console. I am selecting a command which applies to this console key that was pressed, finding the first one and just mapping to the, to the action stored there. And I'm invoking it. Now is the time to change that because this was tied, coupled to this object. And this object is the UI editor. I want to break that connection. And so I will make a breaking change here. I will ask for the editor in action. I want whoever sets up this component here, whoever sets it up, it must tell what it should do in terms of the sound editor, nothing else. It won't be able to see, it shouldn't be able to see anything outside of it. You see, the only reference it has is to the sound editor. And so again, free compile errors. I'm just following the compile time errors. What am I doing? I sound editor. Okay, next. Editor. Good, next. Mm -hmm. Editor. Next. Okay, now we are talking. This one because we are getting close to the operation on the editor here 22 errors oh. okay but that 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 is this all those errors are here everything is red now so the button control with ha will have pri privatized sound editor editor get. We're closing to the end of this demonstration, so be patient for, for 10 minutes more and we will be done. I will, public, public will receive the sound editor. Uh, so many constructors and stuff like that. This should fix it. Okay, this is the only one that works something that, that, that actually initializes. When Okay, add. Oh, because I'm missing the editor. Wait, uh, this editor, this is typically in immutable classes. I will pass the same content, the same so object to the next object. Okay. And so we have the action which will operate on the editor stored in this class. So this class is finally done to only depend on the editor. I am implementing the plan. If you remember that story about the human brain and stuff from, from two days ago, from episode zero, you would make a plan, a rough plan. Then you would make more detailed plans inside of it to make smaller and smaller steps. And then you will refine your actions and compare them to the plan you made. Here is the plan I made, made at the beginning. I will spend another two or three hours to get here. But the plan is there and I'm regulating my behavior towards the, the, the end result I want to see. And this is one element there. Making the, con the button control only uh, hold a reference to the sound editor and only make calls into it. Because I know why that is important. That is important for the architectural reasons. It will make this architecture much cleaner than it is right now. And so I get back here and I say, listen, everybody, everybody, wherever I say this dot, no, wherever I say comma space this dot, I will effectively put an ignore, make comma, uh, discard the object, okay? I will need 
parentheses in all these places, but not in, in every place there, you will see. That's why I have to do this manually. Okay, this one will also ignore it. I will make a replacement for that too. So it is this pattern. Okay, it will become discard this. Okay, I hope it works. Yes, it's better. Okay, what's wrong? What's wrong here? I need parentheses, parentheses, a lot of copy and paste, but I am making the entire application work the same again. It is very important to me. Okay, this editor is the mandatory parameter. And I think I'll be green again. Yes, I am green. <clears throat> so what I did, let's commit to these two. Sound edit, editor moved, uh, made button control only depend on the sound editor on the abstract sound editor. Commit. I have five commits and I'm only this much into the development of this ticket. Anyway, what I did here was to cheat. I was cheating all the time because I'm, I'm not letting the button control use that editor it has, but it doesn't matter. My application is working the same as before. And now I can implement the first actual change and say, whatever editor you have inside, make it toggle the pause. Are you following? This feature is done. And now I will move to a much more complicated one, moving up and down, which includes several things refreshing the view and moving the cursor up and down. How can I do this? I might commit this because this last change, which I'm going to show you, will be the substantial one. Ah, this sentence is so stupid. Don't worry. The last thing I want to do, <clears throat> I actually want to uh, remove both of these methods from this class to completely remove them. How? I cannot just do that because they are also refreshing the UI and sound editor cannot do that. That is how we get to the last element in this plan. This back reference here the sound editor must fire an event when it wants the UI to be refreshed. It must say, these things have changed, redraw them. Since that is very complicated, I will again cut the corner and make the very simple, the most, the simplest of all implementations of that. Shall I do it here? Maybe. Okay. I don't want to put it here because I want to use a concrete uh, arguments, not button control. Listen, I want to use a concrete event arguments class and that doesn't fit the interface. I have stumbled on upon something big here. I have a piece of code that I don't like. Refresh view is being called many times, looking a bit awkward. Yes, it is awkward. That is true. So let's let's show that purge editor refresh view. On the one hand, it is awkward to see it called in many places. On the other hand, it is good to see it implemented in only one uh, place. All this code is actually refreshing the view. All this, all this, even those utility functions to center the string and stuff like that. Oh, this too, this too, all these, this is you are this. Is, oh, this is the refresh view code. So when you ask, 
whether it is awkward to see it called from many places, it might be awkward, but those hundred lines of code which are uh, uh, dealing with the with the console view are done in only one place, so this doesn't bother me. On the other hand, there will be an event handler which will effectively call this in only one place. So you are right. This should not be invoked in many places, but in only one place. On the other hand, uh, triggering the event will be done in many places. You won't run away from this. Which brings us back to the question why Sound Editor has so many methods. Again, because it is doing, doing so many things to the sound, and then so many of those things will re uh, trigger refreshing the, the view. There's no way to run away from that, I, I think. Yes, uh, event handler, exactly. Uh, Keshav, you're right, the event handler will be only one. And you will see that that will be the, the most trivial change of all this. Uh, but again, I have hit something big here. I have tried to declare the event on the abstract editor, but the event would have to have concrete event arguments. And those event arguments will do, guess what? Leak implementation. They are totally explained in terms of the streak edit state. And what if not every sound editor will have it? Therefore, I will push it down. Event handler content changed args. Okay. Here, I have a concrete event which is aligned with the implementation of this class. This will have to be raised to a more abstract level, but not now. I will go to, to the bottom of this class and say private void rise content changed. Okay, I don't have any arguments right now. So this content changed, if it is, if there are subscribers, it will be non null then. Invoke this new, new, oh, these are the arguments. Okay, so I will have the event. In the purge editor, I want to never invoke refresh view myself, but I only want, where is the constructor? I want to set it up to, to be triggered by the event. This editor change, content changed, this refresh view, that's it. This is what I want. I don't want to invoke refresh view from any method. I want to react on the change in the UI. If you observe, I'm green again, but I'm not doing anything. So I, I might not even want to, to commit this change, but I am totally ready to move, both move up and move down operations to the sound editor. Let's declare them that way. I need to find some order in these methods. Okay, public move down, public move up. It will move the cursor, move the cursor and rise content changed. Okay, and I will, okay, I will refactor that to pull them up into the interface because these are domain related operations. Move up and move down. Look at the interface now. The interface is growing larger, but it is collecting a lot of commands and all commands are parameterless. That is very important aspect of this coding. I am building a component which is holding all the domain logic. You will only tell what you want with it, nothing else. When to trigger some logic, all the parameters are already inside, 
all the state is inside, you don't know that. You would click on the interface, you would press a button, things happen. You don't press a button and then answer three questions to populate the, 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 the arguments. No, you just press the button and things happen. And that's how we get this interface, which is parameterless. And then in the editor, I will remove all and I will go here where this doesn't work and say, listen, down arrow means to go to the editor, move down. Then to the editor, move up. I'm green again. Okay, sound editor, mm, moved, move up, up, down to the abstract editor, editor, all right. The last change I want to make is to decouple this setup from this editor, because you see, this line of code doesn't depend on this class in which it is located. It doesn't depend at all. That's why I made the button control dependent on the editor. I have decoupled. Let me show you the plan. I have decoupled. There is no back reference here. I have decoupled it. So what I want is to go to the button control and say this. It is constructed with a constructor. Let me make the constructor private. I want to construct it with the static factory function. Console button control. Create. Out of what? I need a console key exit key and I need the editor. So I will construct new Control with exit key, with no modifiers, with the editor. And now that I set it this way, I don't even need this constructor above. I will pass the empty, empty commands into it and be done with it. So I don't need this constructor either. You see how, uh, how this, this leads to simplification of all code. Everything is getting simple. Right now, I will say create. It will work the same, but these lines, these setup lines that do not depend on anything in this class will now be moved into the button control itself. It will come pre-populated with behavior. And I have effectively removed entirely three commands that this, this class, this UI editor was responsible for. The reason why is in the plan. I wanted to break that back reference and I will continue going that way by removing more and more behavior. But on the other hand, sound editor can now commit the change which is to move setup for move up, up, down and, and toggle pause, yes, to button control class. So I'm committing, this is the eighth commit today. I've been coding for an hour and a half and the result is eight commits which have changed absolutely nothing in the way my application is working unless I made some bug again. I didn't check that to save time. I, I would certainly make detailed checks before any of these commits. Anyway, another three hours, maybe five hours, I don't know, I cannot estimate it precisely, of going in the same direction will eventually move all these commands into the button control class. So this setup would be just this, create, create it for me, all done. This will remain, this will move, this will move, this will move, everything will move, all these implementations will move. And then we will get to that refresh view. So 
This is line 221. This will be line 10 after all these changes are done. And that is the point. So if it is 300 and uh, how many? 320. This class will be 100 lines of code long and every single line of code in it will actually do something on the console. And nothing more. Format strings, pick colors, position cursor, uh, clear text, things like that. It will manipulate the console. And once I move to a graphical UI, I will delete this class. I won't need it anymore. It is already causing trouble to me because when I started, uh, you see that, that uh, line, long lines are trimmed. I cannot see all the text. Um, I don't see the waveform. It is informative in some use cases. So there, there are things that require graphics. And this is uh, this product is mature enough to move to the graphical UI. I'm still not telling which kind of it, whether a standalone application, whether a, a Blazor application, whether a MVC web application, whatever. I'm not deciding yet because I don't have to. There is one additional note which I shouldn't forget. Sound editor is firing events. So what if I applied it to an MVC application? Events go bust. Events are made for desktop. What will I do? Oh, Keshav asks, instead of using when, instead of using this when syntax, which is my custom method, why didn't I use the dictionary? It's very simple. The, the dictionary is mapping or it's actually a list there because it has two levels to decide. Uh, the list is uh, consisting of uh, triplets, of tuples. And tuples are notoriously hard to read. Look at them. You don't want to do this. So I just added the when method and converted that to free items and made it more readable, I think. I'm not sure. So it was just for the, the, the visual uh, reasons, nothing more than that. Why do you prefer to do a static method create instead of a new in this scenario? What are the advantages? Okay, because in this particular, well, I didn't even think about that. If you, if you observed closely, I just made the static create method. Uh, that is the muscle memory for me. It, it happened to me automatically. Here's the reason. This method create is returning an object. And a constructor is populating the pre-created object. Inside the constructor, I could not use the when syntax. I would have to populate it right away with the hard-coded list of, uh, of uh, these elements. And I simply didn't like uh, the thought of it, I mean the thought of what it will look like. So I thought it, it, it's ugly. I'm going with the with the static construct, the static factory method. Where I was uh, at the UI, which doesn't support events. What shall I do if this console app was replaced with a with an MVC application? It won't be able to handle events because it must produce the result, the action results for the web. In that case, this component here will be the only one which is not a good idea. Let me show you. This will keep making calls. So all action methods in the controller would keep making calls into the sound editor. And then the sound editor would somehow have to report back. It should have to have a return value. That, that's the point. It would have to uh, synchronously answer the request so that this controller can produce the response to the web. How do I do that? I split this sound editor into two and it becomes even more abstract than it is right now. So just one 
implementation will rise events and the other implementation would hold some property getter that exposes the accumulated changes that will be used by the controller method, by the action method to produce the response. And these two would be nothing but implementations of this. And since most of their behavior would be the same, this would probably be an abstract class which is doing a lot of things and only delegating the decision how to report back the change to the caller, to concrete implementations. In this way, that opinionated sound editor would remain nearly the same. I won't have to change any domain logic in it. Maybe we should separate business logic into an API. Yes, exactly. And that API would have two concrete implementations so that you can choose which one suits your, your uh, UI better. So what do you think about this? I will, at this point, I will end. There is maybe one important detail uh, that I didn't mention. Event arguments. Yes, event arguments are empty. They should be populated with, with content. Uh, because what is the purge editor doing now when it handles refresh view is invoked? What is it doing? It is refreshing streaks. And how, how does it get streaks? It gets them by picking the color for the, for the index, for example. Okay, here it is. It is querying the streaks which actually delegates to the editor to answer the streak. So it is effectively reading the, the state of the editor before drawing it on the screen. That is not the right way to handle events. Events should contain data, which are explaining them. So uh, after I remove all references to this streaks of index, I would effectively delete this state, but that means that streaks would be part of the event arguments. Once I do that, I would go to the editor streaks, make them private, make the cursor private, make everything private. And then this event will become the only visible behavior added to the sound editor, which is abs absolutely abstract. So that will be even... In that way, I will effectively implement this line of derivation here. And I will be able to pull out the construction and rising of the event into uh, this, this one function. I could pull that out into a separate derived class, the third level of derivation. And... Uh, effectively implement this. I, uh, the abstract interface is missing here. So there will be the interface, a concrete editor, and the component which is rising events from it. So this completes one pretty large chunk of refactoring, of redesigning the application. What I wanted to show you that a Substantial change in the design can happen one little step by one little step. And you can do that for hours, for days, for weeks, and transform the entire subsystem into something completely different.